Feral swine is any suscrufa that is not owned or controlled by humans. Feral swine are not native to the Americas. They have been reported in at least 35 states, and their population is estimated at over 6 million and is rapidly expanding. Range expansion over the last few decades is due to a variety of factors, including their adaptability to a variety of climates and conditions, translocation by humans, and a lack of natural predators. Feral swine cause damages across the board. I mean, our primary um, focus is agriculture and natural resources. Um, they, they will eat or root up almost every crop imaginable. Uh, they've been very destructive to natural resources. Uh, they're considered one of the world's worst invasive species. Uh, but they also damage property, destroying fences, tearing up people's yards, golf courses. They get on highways and cause vehicle accidents. Basically, feral swine just are capable of pretty well tearing up anything they're exposed to. The U.S. Department of Agriculture's National Feral Swine Damage Management Program is looking into new ways to find and stop feral swine and the damage they cause which includes turning to dogs for help. Protector yes. dogs are canines that are trained to find some aspect of the animal. Uh, they're touted usually as being non-invasive because they're not targeting the animal itself. Usually they're going after or detecting something like scat or hair. Our dogs are trained for scat detection. Dogs were initially developed for Nutria, but it's a tool that we have that can easily be transferred to feral swine as well. And it's something that can have the potential to help other programs with their eradication effort or in situations where feral swine are not there or they don't believe they're there, but now you're getting reports suggesting that they might be. So the inset or onset of a potential infestation. Most recently, the canines and their handlers traveled to Southern California to assist with an eradication effort. California Wildlife Services reached out to us uh, and asked if we could assist with some surveys that they were doing for feral swine. They were using a number of different survey tools, which, which is important when you're trying to, quote, prove absence or prove eradication. And they wanted one more tool that they could use to build their confidence that feral swine was indeed absent from the environment, they reached out to us and we sent two canine teams out to the San Diego area and they were assigned different areas that they surveyed. We did not have any confirmed detections when we were in California. The one dog, Kiva, did respond. The sample was collected, but the DNA was so compromised that they could not come back with a clear yes or no as to what the identity of the animal was. It was a great experience for us because introducing the dogs and the handlers to new environments builds their confidence, it builds their skills, it exposes them to new challenges which they have to overcome, they learn from. So it's a process where you just keep getting better because the more experiences you get, the more you learn. So the next time you go out, you're even more prepared to handle the challenge. Detector dogs are just one of the many tools the USDA can use to find and stop invasive feral swine. As we move into situations where we have more and more areas where we've reduced the numbers of feral swine, uh, we're needing to see if animals have been reintroduced uh, or if we've missed some, detector dogs will provide that confidence that they're gone. Yeah.